God truly be the glory. If you will, you 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 have your scripture for the evening. It was sent to us your theme uh, from First Corinthians 15 and 58. And I believe that you have prayed on it and you have sought God's face. And if that is the case, then God has given you this and led you here. And so because God has led you here, I want to be in accordance with God to see if I can work this thing uh, 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 through this, this, this pastor scripture that we have before us today. Amen? Amen. If you're there, you'll find these words recorded. It says, therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the house if you are able. And for a few moments can I speak to you from this anniversary message. Stay the course. Stay the course. Amen. Church family, I remember when I was eight years old. And I wanted to play football. I had to go see my father to get permission so that I could play. Even before I set foot up on the field, even before I even saw the coach, even before I got my equipment, my father sat me down and began to explain some things to me. My father told me that if I started out on this journey, I had to see it through. He said, you're not going to quit in the middle of the journey. You're not going to quit halfway through the season. If you start this journey, you've got to see it through. Uh, in other words, he said, you've got to stay the course. Uh, right. Amen, somebody? Right. And, and so, and, and so I, I asked him, I said, well, Daddy, I said, I understand you want me to stay the course, but why is it so important? And I begin to think, well, is it because he was afraid that I would let my teammates down if I quit on my teammates? And my daddy said, it had nothing to do with your teammates, but everything to do about you. Uh, he said, if you don't stay the course, you'll never know if you're able to take the pressure off. If you don't stay the course, you'll never know what you're made of. If you don't stay the course, you'll never know how you can endure hardships and difficulties. If you don't stay the course, you'll never know how you're going to get through your breakthrough. If you don't stay the course, you'll never understand what's on the inside of you. You've got to stay the course. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, that's been my driving force ever since I was eight years old. And so church family, when I decided to get married, my father set me down once again. Uh, and he told me, the son, he said, don't start nothing. You can't finish. Uh, he said, if you're going to do this, you've got to be committed to what you put your mind to. Uh, if you decide you're going to get married, marriage is not an easy thing. If you're going to marriage, you're going to marriage with your eyes wide open. Uh, if you're going to marriage, you've got to stay the course. And I have. Uh, 47 years later, I'm still staying the course. Uh, but over the years, I have found out that that's easier said yeah. than done. Uh, church, 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 I, I, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to be flippant to take things lightly. You got to understand, uh, saying that is a whole lot easier than trying to live up to it. Uh, there are times you get in a situation that things get rough, uh, and you decide you want to bail. Uh, but in order to stay the course, you got to. It takes work, baby. It takes determination. It takes commitment. It takes endurance. You got to push through so you can prove the naysayers wrong. Uh, there's somebody out there waiting and watching you. Uh, they believe that you can't do what you say you're going to do. Uh, you say you're going on a diet, they know one weekend you're going to throw your hands up. Uh, they say you're going to go on a new job, they know to realize that three months in, you're going to want to quit that job and go somewhere else. Uh, they say you're in a relationship, 48 hours later, you're talking to somebody else. Uh, there are people around you who understand that you say one thing, something else. But I start by the tell you, church, that if you make your mind up, you got to stay in the course. Uh, do you know that the naysayers, there are those people in your life who don't see your dream. They don't see your strength. They don't see your relationship. They don't see your anointing. Uh, you see, they don't see what God sees in you. They don't see what God is calling you to. Uh, and their whole purpose is to pull you down. Uh, they don't want you to walk around and see the kingdom that God has for you. Uh, they don't want you to see what God is opening doors for you. Uh, they don't want you to see that God is trying to bless you. Uh, they don't want you to see uh, what God has in store for you. Uh, and because they can't get there, they don't want you. Because they can't do it. Uh, they don't want you to do it because they can't accomplish it. Uh, they don't want you to accomplish it. And they're always trying to step on your dream. Uh, you know what to do. You know, baby, I decided to go back to school. Go back to school with this. Uh, you you got too old to go back to school. Uh, what about studying? Uh, what about homework? I can't do that. Look, baby, that's what you can't do. You're not talking about what I can't do. Uh, if I put my mind to it, the word tells me I can do all things through Chris who strengthens me. You got to stay the course. 
Somebody. Uh, amen, somebody. See, First Peter 2 and 9 tells us that we are a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I ain't like everybody else. Uh. I'm not like everybody else. Uh. Don't expect me to act like everybody else. Uh. There's something different about me. Uh. There's something peculiar about me. Uh. There's something strange about me. Uh. Don't pigeonhole me. Don't try to tie me with somebody else. I am who God says that I am. Hey, baby, you got to stay. You got to stay the course. Amen. Amen. See, so you let people define you. You let people try to make you who they want you to be. See, when you allow yourself to become more than nothing more than a blank canvas, canvas, you allow the naysayers to paint into you what they want you to be. They define you. But one thing I love about Jesus, uh, Jesus never let nobody define him. Uh, Jesus knew who he was. Uh, he was the son of God, and you couldn't change his mind. Uh, but guess what? Uh, I stop by to tell you, I'm the son of God, too. Uh, and you can't tell me no different. Uh, I am the Benet Elohim. Uh, I'm a child of the Most High. Uh, I'm the Benet Elohim. I'm a son of God. I'm the Bene Elohim. I'm blessed from the uttermost. When you know who you are, people can't define you. When you know who you are, people can't pigeonhole you. When you know who you are, you walk with your head up. I don't let people put me down and tell me what I am and what I ain't. I come by to tell you I can do whatever I put my mind to. I can make whatever God says I can make. I can be whatever God says I can be. Merely because God said it, I know I can do it. How do you know? Huh? But the word tells me so. Huh? The word tells me simply that. Say, I shall do exceedingly and abundantly huh? above all that I can ask or think of huh? according to the power. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to stay. You got to stay the course. Amen. Church, church, you got to stay the course. Amen. You turn to your name and tell your name beside the claim. I know who I am. And I'm going to stay the course. I say that for a reason, but you got some folks on the outside can't figure out why you're still here. You got some folks trying to figure out why you're still going true heart. Why you still going over there? Why are you bother to go over there? What you over there for? You know, they got big ministers all over here. They got ministers three and four thousand people. Huh? Understand, God don't need three, four thousand people. Huh? God said you and me and him is a, a majority. I don't need a whole lot. Me and God is more than enough. Last time I checked, he said, uh, he, he told me simply as that. He said, look, for two or three are gathered in my name. I don't need four or five thousand. Huh? I just need two or three gathered in his name. Huh? I don't need a church full. Huh? I just need some folks who believe like I believe. Huh? I don't need a church full. Huh? I just want the folks to stay the course. Yeah, you stay. I just want you to stay the course. Yes. Amen. Can, 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 can I go a little further? A little further. A little further. It's all right. See, Joseph endured a lifetime of trials, all because his family didn't see what God saw in him. Uh, his family saw a dreamer, but God saw an instrument of deliverance, uh, who he could use to save two nations. That was Egypt and Israel. Uh, Gideon didn't see himself what God saw in him. Uh, when God addressed him, "Hail, mighty man of war," Gideon said, "Who me?" See, some of y'all got the who me mentality. God trying to call you one thing. Huh? God trying to appoint you one thing. Huh? God trying to give you one thing. You go into who me? The worst I make my boast in the Lord. Huh? If God sees it in me, then I can do it. Huh? If God says I can do it, I can do it. Huh? If God says I can accomplish it, I can accomplish it. I don't have to check with you to get your permission. Huh? If God says so. Folks, so, well, you know. You, you, you know, God, 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 God called you into the ministry, and folks, you know, said so I, I, I said, God, why me? I said, God, why not me? You missed that. They missed that. They missed that. They missed that with Bishop. Yes. Why, why me? No, 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 no. Why not me? Why not me? I, 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 I can, I can accomplish. I can do. I can be. If nothing else, God, I can serve you. If nothing else, God, I can stand for you. If I can't do nothing else, God, I can stand in the midst. Huh? If I can't say a word, I can stand. Huh? If I can't sing a note, I can stand. Huh? If I can't preach a note, I can stand. Huh? If I can't do nothing else, God, I can stand. Huh? If you need me to stand, let me stand. I'm real good at standing. Yes. 
We used to have a song. We used to have it when I played football, huh? The little children would run around and they would say, We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like the tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. See, y'all forgot that song. Huh? And all of a sudden, you're getting moved. Huh? You gotta understand, I shall not be moved. Huh? I'm gonna be like a tree planted by the river of water. And God tells me to stand. Huh? And God says, I need you at true heart, then I ain't going nowhere. I don't care how many leave. Huh? I shall stay the course. Huh? I don't care how many walk out. I'm gonna stay the course. Huh? I don't care how many turn their back. I shall not be moved. Can, 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 I, can I tell you something? Oh, wow. oh, 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 watch this. Uh, in the 13th chapter of Exodus, when Moses had gone and told the nation of Israel, that God said, let my people go. And when Pharaoh, after the 10th plague, and Pharaoh had given permission to let people go, God decided to leave them out. But when you get to the, uh, uh, the, 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 the 12th and 13th verse uh, uh, of the 15th, chapter or the 13th chapter of Exodus you'll see it says this that God didn't lead them by the short way into the promised land but he took them the long way around he says because I'm afraid that if you see war you'll get scared and go back home see sometimes God will take you the long way around to find out what you made of sometimes God will take you the long way around to find out what's on the inside of you. Huh? Sometimes God will take you the long way around. Huh? Cause God know there ain't no fight in you. Huh? God know you're not going to stand. Huh? And God said, I'm going to carry you the long way around so I can shake loose huh? all those tired people that don't belong with you. I'm going to shake loose huh? all those who aren't committed. Huh? I'm going to shake loose huh? all those who don't have a dream. Huh? I'm going to shake loose huh? all those who aren't... So this. Everybody who is gone is supposed to be. Wait, 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 can I, can I do it, can I do it this way? Can I do it this way? My, 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 my wife spent, what, 42 years at NASA? And one thing about NASA that I observed and I learned. See, NASA, they were launching rockets into orbit, send them out to the moon, and to Mars, and to orbit the Earth. And what I learned about NASA and the rockets with this is that as NASA would launch a rocket, they had what they call booster rockets. Then, then, then the booster rocket will fire its engines and propel the rocket higher into the stratosphere. And when all the fuel burnt out of the booster rocket, it would fall off and fall back to Earth. See, all those people were nothing more than booster rockets. They were designed to propel you to a place that God is carrying you, huh? Because what God has taken you, they can't go, huh? What God is about to bring you into, they can't go, huh? God said they got to fall off, huh? Because I'm carrying you higher, huh? God said they got to fall off, huh? Because they can't go where you're going to go, huh? They got to fall off, huh? You got some booster rocket friends in your life who don't mean you nothing more. When they leave you, say, so Lord God, I want to thank you. They ain't nothing but booster rockets, that's all they are. They were simply here to propel you to a place. Now that you're in orbit, you don't need them now. So God bless you. Amen. Amen. David, the Apostle Paul, in this chapter, the Apostle Paul gets word from the family of Chloe. He said he got word and, and, and they had told the apostle that there were some shenanigans going on in the house of God. There was some immoral stuff going on in the house. There was some indecent stuff going on in the house. There was some false teachings going on in the house. And then we get to this 15th chapter and they're talking about the resurrection. And the Apostle Paul simply says this, uh, then if the resurrection is not true, then Christ 
did not raise. And if Christ did not raise or rise from the dead, then my preaching is in vain. He says, wait a minute, I can't, I can't deal with that. Why? Because see, I saw Christ for myself on the road to Damascus. And if I'm going to stand on anything, I'm going to stand on what I see. If I'm going to stand on anything, I'm going to stand on what I know. See, when you came here with the man, the man had a vision. And some folks forsake the vision because they couldn't stay the course. But understand, everybody can't stay the course. Can I explain something to you? Everybody will not see the vision. Because God didn't give all of them the vision. God gave the vision to one. Just to one. Now, this is by design. God gave him the vision to test your faith. What do you mean, Pastor? God gave him the vision because now you're required to follow the vision. Can I go a little further? When you look into the book of Genesis, in the very offset of creation, which you'll see God, God forms Adam from the dust of the field. God breathed into him, gave him life. Then God began to give Adam the vision for the garden. Adam's job was to give Eve the vision from God. But because Eve couldn't receive the vision from God, she straight. See, you got to be able to see the vision from God and the man of God. You got to be able to see the vision from God and the man of God and stay the course of. Understand, it's not for you to see the God to the vision. Your job is to see the man. And then see the God in the man. If he was the same man you followed out of the wilderness huh, and brought you here, he's the same man who stands there every Sunday and preaches you. If he's the man that brought you out of the land of wilderness, he's the same man that feeds you every day. Why would you turn your back on him now and walk out on him? You got to stay. You got to stay the course. But because people, see, see, Eve was attracted by what she saw. And it intrigued her. So you had folks who walked out because they were attracted by what they saw. And because they saw something new, it pulled them away. But understand this, if you constantly need something new to get you, you're going to need something new to hold. If you walk down on him, you'll walk out on the next one. If you turn your back on this husband, you'll turn your back on the next husband. If you turn your back on this wife, you'll turn your back on it. I just, I just want to make, I do want to make sure. God says you got to stay. The course. Now understand, everybody's not called to be a visionary. Your job is to follow the visionary. See, the visionary has 20-20 and your eyesight's a little skewed. What do you mean? Now, now, now my eyesight's a little bit better than my wife's. And when we're going on a trip, I always say, I said, baby, I said, the signs up ahead says, you know, the next right is our exit. And she go, I don't see it. I said, no, baby, but just if we stay the course, you'll soon see it. If I stay on this course, uh -huh, in other words, if I keep doing what God has called me to do, uh, if I keep serving like God has called me to serve, uh, if I keep being faithful to God, uh, eventually you're going to see what God has given me. Eventually the vision will come to pass. You just got to stay. Apostle Paul said, look, he said, I know that some folks have creeped in. And often they're trying to carry you away and telling you there's no such thing as a resurrection. But I start by to tell you that if the resurrection is not true, then Christ is alive. If Christ is alive, then I'm alive. And if I'm alive, then we're all lost anyway. We might just go along, just go to heaven. Yeah. He said, if he is alive, then there's no hope for none of us. Uh, if he's alive, there is no salvation. If he's alive, there is no deliverance. If he's alive, we're all just dead anyway. It'd be better off we just die right now. Paul, so you got to stay the course. 
Because I realized they're preaching one thing. You ever seen folks all of a sudden they go back and talk about how good somebody else preaching somebody else's house? Yes. Yes. Well, but you don't hear the preacher in your own house. I went to so and so church and they really threw down. And then you tuned in, all they made a whole bunch of noise and a whole bunch of cliches. They ain't taught you nothing. Well, well that's where you want to be. You want to be full of nothing. You see, like I said, why to pump nothing in, nothing up. You got to stay the course. Amen. Understand, David. David went down to the battle. The faith of life. But understand when David gets down there, his brothers didn't see in David what God saw in David. They begin to tell David, say, wait a minute, David, so you ain't nothing but a nosy, ruddy, little pest. Going back home. See, sometimes people are trying to hide their deficiencies by trying to bring you down. God just dropped that in my spirit right now. See, some folks, people are trying to hide their fears by trying to destroy you and bring you down. Uh -huh. But the word of God tells me simple as this. Uh -huh. No weapon formed against me. You can go ahead and you can talk all you want to. Uh, but no weapon formed against me. Uh, you can scatter by my name all you want to. Uh, but no weapon formed against me. Uh, you can spread my name all over town all you want to. Uh, but no weapon formed against me. Uh, you can get up on the phone and have your phone party all you want to. Uh, but no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because I'm more than a conqueror. And God said, I'll make your enemies. You got to stay. You got to stay the course. David goes down. Watch this now. David goes down to the battle. And the Lord will provide. You got to understand, you might not, it may not look like it right now, but the God's going to make it way to know it. When you read about David and David's adventures against Goliath, what you read simply is this. Uh, that David didn't have no rocks. He picked them up on the way to the battle. <laughs> David didn't have no rocks in his pot. The Bible says he went down and he got by the brook and he stooped down and picked up five smooth stones. In other words, David was headed to the battle knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. See, you got to get up and stay the course, David. Uh, I'm determined my mind is made up. Uh, the Lord's going to fight my battle. Uh, God will provide for me when I get down to where I need to be at. Uh, David got down and got five smooth stones but God didn't need but one. See, David equated, I need five. God said, no, you ain't even one. one. I'm glad you got five. But you really need one. Why? He said, because I'm in your slingshot. I'm in your right arm. I'm in your voice. I'm in your word. I'm in your ear. I'm in your heart. And long as I'm in there, you don't need but just me and you. Bishop, I don't nobody show up. You keep showing up. Amen. Bishop, you're coming in by yourself. You just come in and preach to the pews. Amen. You preach to the pews and God will send them. Amen. God never told you you had to go out and get nobody. God didn't tell you you had to fill the church. He said the church, those got saved, such as will be saved according to the word of God. In other words, God's going to send folks. You just got to preach. You got to be prepared to teach. You got to be prepared to stand forth and stand flat-footed and deliver a word. I don't care if one shows up, and if one shows up, make it an usher. If two show up, make them an usher. If three show up, make them an usher. Pastor, what are you doing? I'm getting ready for the overflow. But you got to stay the course. If you don't stay the course, if you don't stay the course, you can't see the vision. Huh? If you don't stay the course, you're going to miss your off-ramp. Huh? If you don't stay the course, you're going to miss your exit. Huh? So we've missed our exit because we bothered to stay the course. Anybody ever got discombobulated? Yeah. You ain't got all turned around? Yeah. And, and the thing that you realize that you can't get straight until you go back to where you came from. Yeah. And start all over again. Yeah. I'm saying everybody who has walked out shall not receive the blessings of the Lord until they turn around and come back and then leave the right way. I, now, I don't know nothing about y'all. That, that's just God. That's God talking. Until they come back and say, you know what, Pastor, I left the wrong way. Please forgive me. Why? 
Every day I put my hand on this fell apart. Uh, everything I try to do is a failure. Uh, I can't even sleep at night. Uh, I'm constantly being worried at night. Uh, I'm being tormented on every end. Uh, and God told me to go back to where I came from, get it right. You got to fix it. And if you don't, you can't find peace. Why? Because God is serving as a God of order. He's not a God of disorder. He's a God of decency. And everything you do with decent and in order. You just can't do any of your kind of way. Bob has touched out my anointed uh, and do my prophet no harm. Uh, last time I checked, that meant man of God. Uh, and if you're doing it wrong, God said, that's all right. I get eat with you. Don't you realize that when he came out of Egypt, God prolonged Pharaoh letting him go? Because God said, somebody got to pay for this. He said, Pharaoh is a God heart and Pharaoh's heart. So that he wouldn't let them go. Why? Wow, somebody got to pay for this. Uh, every foul word that's said against this man, somebody got to pay for her. Uh, every evil thing that's been done against this man, somebody got to pay for her. Uh, God said, somebody going to pay for that. Uh, you might, it might not happen now, but it's going to happen sooner or later. Amen. It's going to happen. The Apostle Paul trying to convince the church that you have to stay the course. See, you got to be able to endure some hardships. Understand, there is no victory without trials. There is no testimony without a test. You've got to go through something in order to attest to something. Can I say that again? See, you, you, you can't profess something unless you've been through something. You want to talk about how good the Lord is. And you ain't had a hard day in your life. Talking about how wonderful the Lord is. And you ain't been through nothing. Huh? Everything in your life coming up roses. Huh? I want to talk to you. I want to talk to somebody who's an ex drunk. Huh? Somebody who was hooked on drugs. Huh? Somebody who done lost a job. Huh? Somebody who's got a broken marriage. Huh? Somebody who's been kicked out of the houses. Huh? Somebody who's had their car repo. I want to talk to somebody who's been through something. Huh? Who done been through something and come out of something. See, all you got is a whole bunch of problems. I want some solutions to my problems. Bring me some solutions. Yeah. Tell me how you came out. Huh? Oh. You ever seen folks, Lord, y'all pray for me. I'm going through. Well, yeah. sit down till you come out. Yeah. You want me to carry my burden and your burden too? I got enough burden in my own to carry. You sit down till you get delivered. And when you get delivered, y'all don't know I was going through last week. But the God I love. Talk about you going through. Look here, I walk in church like this and leave like this. Why do I feel so bad? Because everybody talking about going through. Well, I'm going through. Has anybody got the living in here? The worst is that the redeemer of the Lord say so. Somebody say so. In other words, see, you lost your job. So your marriage is on the rock. So you so, you can't find a job nowhere. So, people have put you out your house. So, so, bring me something. You ain't brought me nothing. When I came to the job, I came looking. When I thought they knew, I was looking. What do you know? You've been married 47 years. You did the girl. You went to high school. What do you know about dating? Yeah, I got her. I know that. So you found the right one, you didn't stop. Pump my brakes. I done found the right one. I ain't going to live for no more. This is it. This is it. This is it. Church, being committed, staying the course means you have to endure. You have to go through some stuff. Yeah, yeah. You have to suffer some stuff. Yeah. And if you can't suffer, he said those who suffer with him huh, shall reign with him. If you can't suffer, you can't reign. If you can't suffer, you can't endure. If you can't suffer, you can't receive. Sometimes you got to go through some stuff to know that Christ is real. I remember when I lost my job, I was driving home trying to figure out how I'm going to tell my wife I lost my job for 30 some years. And all I heard was God's voice telling me in the midst of my tears. I was crying. In the midst of my tears, God said, before you tell anybody I can, you first must know I did. 
Somebody missed that, huh? Before you can tell anybody that God came, you got to first know that God's already done it in your life. Huh? And if God done brought you out, huh? God can bring me out. Huh? If God done brought you out, huh? God can bring them out. Huh? If God has brought you out, huh? See, there was a different kind of conviction when you have been through something. Somebody said, you can't be as a BS artist. Amen, somebody. You can't fool nobody. People know you. People say they're street wise and they slick. You try to tell them, baby, I understand. I know what you're going through. No, you don't. You ain't never had a drink in your life. Don't tell me how I feel when I want to drink. You ain't never in your life had, had, had a hit of crack until you done had a hit of crack and know what I'm going to do. You ain't never had your heart broke. Well, tell me how I feel now that my heart is broken. And gonna try to tell me what I feel. Babe, you got to walk in my shoes and been through what I've been through to tell me how I feel. Amen. Amen. I know how you feel. No, don't, don't, don't lie to me. Send me 10, 10. Well, go find somebody that's been through what I've been through and send them to me. Amen, somebody. Amen. Church, you got to stay the course. You can't throw your hands up and get tired because it's not popular anymore. See, people want to treat the church like it's a fad. Yes. You know, it's like it's a fad. You know, your, your hymn lines go up and it goes down according to the fads or according to fads, but fashion never goes out of style. Fads will come and go. Fads will change, but fashion will stay forever. A fashionable suit that they wore back in the 50s, you can still wear today. What do you mean, Pastor? Last time I checked, pinstripes go back to 1930. They're wearing, wearing pinstripes today. Because it's fashionable. Yeah. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Fashion stays. The grass withers. The flowers fade. But the word of God will always stand. Amen. Stay the curse, church. Stay the course, church. God bless y'all. Love you. The heaven smile upon you.
know. I just know what God is showing me. And I just feel that there has been a, a recent exodus in here. Yes. Amen. There's some folks left because they ain't like the pastor. You know, uh, anybody here served in the military? Yes, military? You ever had any commander officers you didn't like? Because I sure did. Did you follow their orders? <laughs> well, as long as it's a lawful order. Okay, yeah. Yeah. As long as it's a lawful order. Let, let, me, let me go. I said sometimes. You ever had any officers you didn't like? And they gave you order. Did you follow it? That. He says, I was under their command. And the Bible tells me that it is God. He says that we should submit to the higher authority. Because the higher authority is ordained of God. Not about what we like or what we don't like. It's about submitting to the authority that's placed over us. Amen. I've had commanders that I had one who cheated me out of a soldier's medal, one who lied on me, and one who did all kinds of nasty behind the back things to try to destroy my career. But when he gave me an order, I followed it. I followed it. Because as long as I wore that uniform, I had an obligation. I had a, a right to follow. As long as you sit, under this man of God. You have a moral obligation to submit to his authority. Simple as that. Through heart, Genesis and way on even Genesis 2. You've got to stay the course. It might look difficult. Like I said, God took them the long way around. Well, why? God said, because when you came out of bondage, you came out with a slave mentality. When you walk to the promised land, you walk in his warriors. Sometimes it takes God 40 years to change your mentality and to change the way you think. So if you're wondering why it's taking a longer than you thought, because God is changing you into an army. God is changing you into a mighty army that will go out and will take this community, who will take this area who will stand boldly and profess Christ just like the Apostle Paul. Yes. And you'll stay the course. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Have a smile upon you.